Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 262 of Love at First Scent, with me, Persilase, coming to you live from YouTube, who has got some, uh, Persilase, who's got something in his eye, and hopefully will be able to make it through to the end of this episode without having a contact lens pop out. Um, if you've been watching the these live, uh, thank you very much for sticking around. This is the third of three live videos we've done today, and like I said, it was going to be it is going to be a proper trip down memory lane with also a review of something brand new. Uh, David says the, gets the first comment. Uh, he says, happy to catch this live, and I'm very, very happy that you're here. Jonathan is still around. Katzi is saying hello. Uh, Stephanie says, hello, we meet again from NYC. Um, Alien on Beauty says, these classic episodes are my favorites. I love doing them as well because you always have so much to say, all of you. Um, um, and I should also say, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so, and please consider supporting my work on coffee. You will find the information about all of that in the video description below. So what are we doing today? Well, this is brand new, okay? So this is the Le Parfum version of Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Beau. And you may remember that a few years ago, Le Beau was the kind of update of Le Mal. Um, confusingly, even though it's calling itself Le Parfum, it's actually an intense Eau de Parfum. This is new. In fact, I believe, um, I, th I think it is out now, but I think it's only just come out. This comes um, on the heels of last year's um, La Belle Le Parfum, which was the intense EDP version of La Belle, which was an update of Classique. So I thought, well, if we're doing this one as a new release, then we ought to try and talk about this one as well. And I thought, well, if we're doing that, in the spirit of anniversaries and things like that, seeing it as in seeing that a couple of videos ago I was talking about the 12th anniversary of my blog, I thought, well, let's just go right back to the beginning of this range and also talk about the original Le Mal EDT and the original Classique EDT. And you cannot tell me that those of you, that the you out there, that you have not smelt at least one of those. And in fact, I'm sure most of you have smelt both of these. And I'm sure a lot of you will know somebody who wore them and will have all sorts of interesting stories to tell me about your experiences with Le Mal and Classique. Um, <clears throat> what uh, are people saying so far? Heimke says, Fleur du Mal was my favorite. Uh, Gautier, yes, I still have a bottle of that. Very, very, very sadly discontinued. Um, Woozy says, re-sniffing a vintage or a current version. Sadly, these are all cut. Well, I say sadly. I mean, sadly, they're not vintage, but but they are current versions. So to make that clear, good point. Thank you for asking that. Uh, Le Beau is the coconut one. Yes, says David. I believe you are right there. Will there be an Ask Me Anything video for your anniversary, Mr. Perslase, or at least any time soon, says James. Ooh, maybe sometime soon. But but yeah, we'll uh, put that one aside. Um uh, Mr. Dark says, what? I've just seen what you've written. I heard they got the mould for the chiselled body from Sire P. Yes, but they decided that that one would actually put people off, so they went for, uh, I, I don't know, no, Brad Pitt probably doesn't look like that. Who's they have gone for? I don't know. Um, Ryan Reynolds? Ryan Reynolds? Maybe. I actually I wonder who they did model it on, because, because this, I guess, at some stage, you know, back when it was a very, very defined corset, I guess was a very, very clear reference to Madonna's blonde ambition to a costume, the famous Madonna corset, which was designed by Gautier. Um, I don't know if like the proportions of the, of, the, of the bottle were meant to be inspired by by Madonna, but the Le Mal bottle, actually, I wonder if it was inspired by anybody in particular. And I think it's really, really fascinating in a kind of anthropological, in a sociological sense, to compare them with, with the new ones, because if this was Madonna, then La Belle is, is very much a kind of Kim Kardashian model of, of what's considered to be attractive modern femininity. Um, Drawn by Sen says, the only JPG I ever had was Fleur du Mal, bought for me as a gift, not much left in the bottle. Uh, and Rachel says, I've never sniffed any. Wow, amazing. I just love the fact that, that you know, there is still a first time for, for everything, for, every, for, for everybody. Uh, Gavin says, Le Mal is the sherbet smell of nightclubs in the noughties. Uh, some Le Mal experiences I'd rather forget, says Cynthia. Do tell. Uh, Gavin says it's, um, oh, and yes, absolutely, you're right. Um, Gavin is saying it's a reference to the Schiaparelli perfume bottle, the female bottle. Yes, well, it was kind of both, because if you look up 
what was that? Shocking. Of course, it was shocking. Uh, if you look up shocking perfume bottle, you will see that this is very much a reference to that. But I think the Madonna reference is is for sure there as well. Um, OK, we, we, we need to do some sniffing. We need to do some smelling. And I, I think it makes sense to sort of grow in a, go in chronological order. So back in 1993, Almost 30 years ago, people, so next year this marks it, this celebrates its 30th anniversary, back in 1993, Jean-Paul Gaultier released this, and of course, I think I'm right in saying that it, it was not called Classique, in fact, I'm not sure exactly when the name changed to Classique to distinguish it from all of the other ones, I think it was just Jean-Paul Gaultier sent, and then I think when this came along two years later, it was Jean-Paul Gaultier pour Homme, and then, then then it got marketed, branded differently. Let's see. Let's see if this is going to take... I haven't smelled this for the longest time. Um, is Classique timeless, or does it smell of its time, says David? We will find out. We will find out. Now, you know, no matter what we may think of these scents, just the fact that they have stuck around for as long as they have says something. They, 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 you know, love them or hate them, these are now very definitely icons of modern perfumery. And clearly they continue to do well, otherwise they wouldn't be here. Right. 30 years old and at least as many flankers, says Jeremy. Um, it's, it's just, you know, I have been doing, I've been doing the blog for 12 years, I've been smelling perfume for decades, wearing perfume for decades, but the power of certain scents to transport me to a particular time and place never, ever, ever fails to surprise me. And right now, I mean, feel free to laugh. I'm laughing inside in my head. <clears throat> this has taken me back to the to the photocopier room, the, reprograph the so-called reprographics department of a school in which I used to work, many years ago, two, two decades ago, and I would turn up to work fairly early, long before the pupils arrived, because I used to like to be able to get lots of things done before the day really got going. And unsurprisingly, one of the one of the things that I would need to do on most mornings is go in, you know, maybe do some printing, do some photocopying. And there was a colleague, a colleague from the history department, who also liked to turn up early, and I would also usually see her in the repro reprographics department. Should we just say in the photocopying room? Except it was it was really huge. Actually, it was it was a huge space because it was a big school. They needed they needed a big reprographic <laughs> photocopier room. And she wore this, and so now I'm right back at the photocopier, <laughs> photocopying some English worksheets for um for some sixth formers. Um, Oh, James says, wasn't even born when it was released, and so don't really have any nostalgic memory of it. Well, there you go. That's the beauty of scent as well. You can make your own memories. Um, Fernando says, oh, what are you talking about, by the way? I love it as well. Fleur de Cologne is the flanker of a flanker. Yeah, well, yes, you carry on with your conversations. So, is it timeless? It probably is of its time. I don't remember it smelling quite so soapy. But then, but then I also don't know if my main experience of it is the EDT or the EDP. Weirdly, bizarrely, I was not able to find out when the EDP was released or if it was released at the same time as the EDT. I've got the date for the EDT is 1993. Um, it's, what's interesting about it, smelling it again now, is that it's, a, it, it's essentially a sort of abstract floral of a sort that you kind of don't get now. Something happened to mainstream perfumery, and I'm sure I've discussed this before, something happened to mainstream perfumery, um, I think about 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, where the, the, the notes in perfumes or the identity of perfumes had to suddenly become a lot more legible so that, you know, a scent, um, had to very, very definitely be a jasmine if it was going to be a jasmine, or had to very definitely be a rose if it was going to be a rose. And abstraction was was deemed old-fashioned or undesirable. Um, whereas this this does, I suppose it veers towards, I think somebody said it, it veers, veers towards things like orange blossom, certainly mimosa, maybe a suggestion of white flowers, but but it is it is abstract, and there is something quite golden about it. And 
something soapy powdery, sort of old fashioned soapy powdery. Um, Nick Nick says, I'm too young to have grown up with Classique. It was launched the year I was born. Wow. Uh, where I'm from, the scent was strongly associated with the gay community and most men would avoid it for that reason. Um, interesting. Uh, Pro Quo says, the aldehydes of yester decade that we now identify as soapy astringent are the equivalent of Ambroxan and IsoE Super today. You may well have a point there. Maybe in the next 10 years we'll be put off by Ambrox, hopefully. Uh, scents also get more legible when they're less concentrated, says Heinke. Interesting point. I'm not sure I completely agree, but interesting point. Um, Eco Jock says, do you think abstraction um, was replaced with the obvious, with the hardening of society and the demise of subtlety? Yeah, well, we, we, could, we could have an interesting sociological discussion about all of that. But, you know, if somebody wore this now, I, I suppose I might think that maybe they were wearing something a touch old fashioned, but I would still... I'd still appreciate it. I think there's something there's something very, very genuinely solar about it in the way that a lot of scents nowadays that think they're being solar don't actually achieve. But anyway, we haven't got tons of time to dwell on it. So let's move on. Let's move on to the smell of a million teenage boys. And funnily enough, you know, because because I've worked for many, many years as a teacher for the last few years, not so much in a in a kind of in the hustle and bustle of a school, but Interestingly, when I was working at a school, I would smell this a lot, but that not so much. So for some reason, this really, really appealed to teenage boys. It was a secondary school as opposed to a primary school. This really appealed to teenage boys, whereas that, for whatever reason, maybe didn't appeal to teenage girls. Go figure. But here we go. Um, oh, and did I say this obviously was composed, the uh, classique was composed by Jacques Cavalier, probably one of the most successful things he's ever done and uh, Le Mal famously composed by Francis Kirchian. Um, what's our schwag saying? Le Mal, for me, it is the smell of inside trams during weekends in the 2010s. Uh, Jeremy says, if there's any brand that got their money's worth out of the glass bottle molds over the years, it's Jean-Paul Gaultier. Yes, the, 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 the royalties have come in very, very handy. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Here we go. I'm sure this is just going to make me burst out laughing. Um, and Rachel says, yes, I'm also a teacher in the US, and this is still true. Amazing. What, as in boys going for La Malle, but girls not so much for Classique? Um, right, let's see. <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's... Now, I wonder if this was always as harsh as it's coming across now. I think what was fascinating, what was amazing about Le Mal and what Kirk Jean did was that he, I mean, because it, it, it's a fougere, okay, again, for those of you who are not aware, which means that it's got a very, very strong uh, lavender note. It's got that kind of barbershop feel to it, suggestion of orange blossom maybe on a kind of woody, kind of mossy-ish um, base. Um but I wonder, I wonder if it's lost a little bit of smoothness over the years, or maybe actually, maybe scents in the 90s were a little bit more bolshy, um, and I've just forgotten what this smelt like. Um, oh, David says harsh, yes. Yeah, there's something, there's something kind of rough edged about the lavender here. Maybe it'll be to do with reformulations because doubtless this will have been reformulated over the years. It would, it would have to be reformulated, but, but I just, I just loved the fact. Oh, don't drop the blotter. I just loved the fact that so many lads, you know, they, they would like hit 15, 16, and they would think that they were just the bee's knees. Um, and, and not that I'm trying to belittle them, because you know, if they, if they loved the sense and their friends loved the sense, that's great. But, but this would be the, the finishing touch for so many boys, wouldn't it? You know, to have a spray of um, Lamal. And how great that, that, that the bottle was deemed perfectly acceptable by boys who may otherwise have, you know, not wanted to associate themselves with with overtly gay um, imagery and the adverts um, certainly always had a homoerotic, I was going to say undertone, I mean, it was hardly an undertone to it, but, but it was fine. Um, why do they reformulate? Surely the ingredients were safe then, says Eco Jock. 93? No, there have been there have been changes since 93, 94, 95, and changes happen all the time. Uh, some of you may be aware that um, the ingredient Lilial, 
which is just insanely ubiquitous in perfumery, is being banned completely. And I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Classique contained some Lilial. I wouldn't be surprised if if Lamal contained some as well. So, so reformulations would have been inevitable. Um, imagine. Uh, wearing Lamal and attending a Kodo ceremony, says Ashfaq. Well, I, I, th I think you, you just probably wouldn't do that. And thank you, Cynthia. You're, you just used the word sweetness. We need to say that this has definitely got a sweetness to it as well, but not not an overwhelming, cloying sweetness. Okay, let's see what the update is. Let's let's do let's do the noisy bit first. I know a lot of you like this. Oh, so you get metallic sounds with this one as well. Oh, come on. I promise I do clear up after myself when this is when this is over. All right, let's do the unsealing of the other one as well. So what we're doing now is we're going to be looking at the Le Parfum versions of Le Beau and uh, La Belle. There you go. As Gavin saying, 2010 to 2012 was the big IFRA change. Uh, Jeremy says, I have a a half bottle of Lamal from the early 2000s, and it's very potent and very sweet. I find it hard to wear, but keep it around for nostalgia. Y yes, I, I, I think you would have to keep it around for nostalgia. About. Okay, so this is La Belle Le Parfum, which came out last year, um, the sort of most concentrated version, I believe, of La Belle. And let's compare bodies. Don't worry, we'll be doing it for the boys as well. Oh, I can't even open this one. <laughs> okay, and the actual sprayer has come off. Bear with me. Oh, come on, you've got to be kidding me. Let's try and hook something in there. Right, we are getting there, folks. <clears throat> yeah, I remember the first time I saw the Labelle bottle. I thought, hmm, not sure what I think of this. Because, look, they're... Right, let's, let's do a side-by-side. -side. Technical difficulty, says Jeremy. So, so this one is this is is faceted, but what I what I found really really fascinating is that the derriere is suddenly a lot larger, proportionally speaking, and yet I don't I don't know is is the is the cleavage small? I can't believe I'm doing this. I promise I'm going to do it with the guy's bottle as well. Um, this is this is rather fetching, I suppose, and I think somehow the proportions of this, unless I'm mistaken are closer to the Schiaparelli, to shocking. But I'd need to do a side by... This, this, person, this person looks as though they've been kind of like hitting the steroids a little bit. I don't know. Anyway. It's so garish, says Stephanie. Um, yeah, but, but you know, this, this isn't a kind of holding back scent, is it? it it's it's, it's got to be fairly in your face. So let's see. These are now. I forget who, which one is by which one, because I know that um, that these two new ones are made with Quentin Biche, by Quentin Biche and Sonia Constant. But I think Sonia is not involved with some of them. So you, you'll find the information online, or if I find out, then I'll post it in the video description below. But here we go: La Belle Le Parfum, which is an intense EDP. Now. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's pop, let's pop her here, shall we? Let's pop her next to her big sister. Really, really dark colored bottle, isn't it? I'm loving the assessment of the plastic surgery remodel of Classique, says David, yeah. The shocking bottle is broader in the shoulder, says Shimon. Thank you very much. Have you got a shocking bottle, Shimon? <gasps> you didn't bring it to show me. Next time if we meet up, you have to let me see it. Um, Ooh, from May West to Kim K West, says Maudlin. Well done. Yeah, now this is this 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 brings us right um right into the uh 2020s because this is really, really sugary. L less faceted. It's gotta it's gotta be said, you know, ironically the bottle is faceted, but the perfume somehow isn't. Um, kind of medicinal feel to it as well. It, do, it does seem to be about sugars and vanillas, resins, and just a kind of, definitely some kind of woody ambery thing happening in the base too. And 
something something kind of cough syrupy resinous coming through i should say after smelling classique and le mal your nose is bound to start getting a little bit tired so i shall try to return to this blotter when things are a bit calmer but yeah it, it it's all of those sort of sweet syrupy sickly fruity notes that we get from so many perfumes now so things like cherry notes and strawberry notes you know gummy sweets all of that kind of thing that we supposedly want is it basic says david um maybe i mean it's it's not kind of it's not sort of drawing me in particularly but but let's see how it develops let me just label it and then we'll do the boys bottle um what are people saying here? Uh, Jonathan says, thoughts on why Cocorico wasn't as successful, similar in concept, it's far better. Yeah, I was taken with Cocorico and that was such a genius bottle, such an amazing bottle that whoever it was came up with. Um, I, I was kind of fond of it. Right, last one. Let's try not to, oh, to do this. Okay, and here is, here is the boy's equivalent. So who's he meant to be? Um... Now the the fig leaf the fig leaf I think is just is is just so irritating. Why why is he why is he got to have a fig leaf when the other guy doesn't? Um, so he also is faceted, but definitely he's definitely been hitting the steroids. I suppose this guy needn't have been doing steroids. I don't know, but he definitely and he's got yeah. So 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 could, so could this be? I don't know. Is this like? A, Henry Cavill or somebody like that if this was I don't know not that I'm trying to imply that Henry Cavill is on steroids but yes and there is the fig leaf and he has also been doing his squats um but also this kind of gradated dark dark bottle whose shoulders are broader actually let's let's compare I mean it's got to be the guys yes there we go so power couple of the 2020s right let's 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 smell him um very steroid looking for sure says udo pantograph a bit telling of current times um and we are becoming ai says leah i think that's the message oh goodness no i hope no um the fig leaf reminds me of a face hugger <laughs> I'm not going to be able to unsee that now. So alien reference, okay. Except this isn't a face hugger, it's a something else hugger. Right. Don't you dare any of you type anything dodgy into the um right, let's smell this one now. So finally, Le Beau, Le Parfum from Gautier, the latest, the latest release. It really is a face hugger. I mean, yes, it it it, it totally is like a face hugger. Where's Ripley when you need her, right? Um, the Spaced Out says, the fig leaf represents the impotence as a side effect from doing steroids. Oh, gosh, you're on fire today, all of you today, aren't you? <laughs> right, let's pop. Oh, gosh. Oh, I don't know if Papa Persiles is going to be liking this one so much. Uh. Oh, that's, that's rough. If only, yeah. We need more than just a face hugger now. Okay, so yes, there is a kind of coconut note, as you'd expect, but it's a pretty rough edged in your face. Take no prisoners, no subtlety here. Coconut and tons and tons and tons of ambery woods in the base. Do you prefer this or Le Mal Le Parfum? Oh, no, definitely the Le Mal. Um, Oh gosh, that's 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 rough. That's rough. When you think, let me just get the Lamal bottle back. Ah, I mean, the Lamal bottle is just positively tender, and the, the Lamal is tender and delicate in in relation to this. Wow. Um, let's see actually what the brand says about it. In the Garden of Gautier, temptation is even more sultry. Temptation is more sultry. With Le Beau Le Parfum, the intense new eau de parfum, to seduce all sins are permitted. There's no need to hide behind the green vegetation of its iconic packaging. Uh, wearing nothing but a golden fig leaf, face hugger. This unique bottle naturally gets naked. It's torso lacquered with a black and green degradé effect. Its force 
of attraction, the forbidden fruit of an extremely addictive woody amber, which tempts the senses to disobey. Now, okay, absolutely, totally I acknowledge and accept that for some people, those woody ambers are ridiculously addictive, extremely addictive, and they seem to be doing very well, um, but they are still not for me. Wow. I mean, yeah, I, I guess if you do like your woody ambers, then this is the one you've got to go for. Gosh, with, with I suppose the idea of the coconut being to kind of lighten it up and sweeten it out a little bit, but yeah, this, is, this is potent stuff, though. A perfume inspired by Love Island. Yeah, I think you're probably right, Gavin. Um, and as Shimon says, tempt, tempt, the, the, the line tempts the senses to disobey makes your stomach churn. Yeah, it does. This is, this, this is probably going to do well. There are probably going to be lots of people going into perfume departments, lots of guys smelling this going, whoa, this, 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 this has performance, this has power, I'm going to get this. Whew. Yeah, that's that's not my favorite. Um, let's go back to Le Mal and classic. The classic, the, yeah, the classic, the classic. Now smelling these two actually smells really, really classic. It's almost kind of got a powdery retro quality to it. Who knew? Who knew that that's what would be happening? And Le Mal, as I said, is now coming across as really, really gentle and tender and heartfelt. Okay. Blotter updates on these coming up for sure at some stage in the next 24 hours. But until next time, and for now, thank you very, very much for watching. If, you stu if you've stuck around for all three lives, thanks very much indeed. And if you are watching live, don't forget that I will be doing uh, my very, very best uh, a week today, so the 20th of March, to be broadcasting something to mark um, International Fragrance Day, which is Monday the 21st of March. But until then, be good. Thank you very much. And um, stick to the classics, I think. Okay, take care. Bye.